Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our week three audio file for the Clutter Free 2023 group. And this week we are focused on acquiring. So how do we, how do we um, bring objects into our possession? How do they even end up with us? How have they ended up with us? Um, I think this is such an important part of the decluttering process. It really helps us to change the patterns. If we've had a pattern of building clutter uh, over the years, looking at how that has happened and then really compassionately towards self saying, how do I want to change this? Or how do I stop the flow, <laughs> stop the flood? And it can be a really nice mindfulness practice too when we're out in the world and we feel that urge to bring something home or somebody offers us something for free to stop and think about kind of our goals or our wishes for our spaces and maybe thinking back to times where we've brought in objects and then it's taken us years to deal with getting rid of them so some of the questions that I like to ask people around acquiring include, how has your acquiring changed over time? I was just thinking about that for a moment. Maybe you had some acquiring or some collections when you were young. Maybe you left some of those at your parents' home or your caregiver's home. Maybe you, when you started your own family or house, you felt the need to buy a lot of things or take on things. Maybe you acquired objects from loved ones when they passed on or when they moved or maybe you bought a lot of things for new children. Maybe you got in the habit of always picking things up at the free bin or at the thrift store or every time you go to Target. <laughs> People always joke about Target as a place where they overbuy something about the way it's set up. How does my relationship to objects tell me more about who I am? So when you're out in the world and you're bringing something home with you, is it because you feel there's a lack or a need in your space? Or maybe it's like we've talked about being a possibilitarian or a connectarian where you're like, I can find a use for this object. Or maybe it's the dopamine. Maybe you realize that you have a dopamine seeking part of you that's like, ooh, a free thing. I, this is exciting. This makes today exciting. I'm bringing this home. Or um, maybe you're out and you find a really nice artisan piece of jewelry, even though you have a lot of jewelry and you say to yourself, like this is such a high value item for me because it's unique and it's jewelry and it's artisan. I'm going to buy it even though I may have more than I need at home. So the question again was, how does my relationship to objects and bringing, acquiring them tell me more about who I am? So as you're out in the world, just kind of maybe taking one breath before you bring something in, before you commit to bringing something in. And if you can't do that, if you're kind of just on an impulsive, way of moving through acquiring, the first step is just to notice yourself doing it. So you don't necessarily have to stop today. You don't have to be like, okay, I'm never buying anything again or bringing anything home. But just noticing, watching yourself, being an observer and watching yourself take the action. And maybe watching with compassion, saying, oh, look, I'm doing that thing. Is this really a thing that I want to continue? Maybe next time I won't do it. Another question is, what am I trying to make space for in my home? So sometimes it's nice to ask yourself, okay, this is an awesome table. 
that my friend is giving away for free. It's really nice. But if I take it home, I won't be able to make the space for dancing or cooking or the playroom that I want to have or the freedom of movement I want to have in my home. So again, the question is, what am I trying to make space for? If I bring this in, is it worth the energy of everything I need to do to get rid of it? So thinking about, let's say I'm a friend of mine offers me all of their children's toys, <laughs> like old children's toys. Yes, that might be exciting to bring it home, right? But how about what if you know my kids are not that into it or whatever and then it goes in the closet or it goes on the floor and how much energy does it take for me to pick up all the little Legos or pick up all the stuff or pack up the stuff or get it out of the house and get it to the place that it needs to go to versus never bringing it home in the first place. And I think as you do this decluttering process, you'll really start to think about acquiring that way because you're, you're doing so much work to get rid of things that then you start to go, gosh, this is a lot of work. This is a lot of my life. This is a lot of time. It'd be easier if I just didn't bring as much stuff home in the, to begin with. And of course, when, again, when we've talked about this before, but kind of asking yourself, what is my why? What is my why around my home, around decluttering? And then acquiring, like, you know, that impacts what we bring home because as soon as we bring it home, it goes into the stuff, the possessions I have, it, which can be clutter. It goes from an acquiring, acquiring an object to having an object. And I think for some of us, that might be an executive functioning thing. Like we're not, there's a bit of like, you know, uh, unawareness not being aware of that conversion from, oh, I'm acquiring this, to the heaviness sometimes of owning too many objects. Another question I like to ask, and we'll get more into this today, but does your relationship to acquiring stuff hurt anyone else? So does it impact anybody else as you acquire these things? Is it, are you building up debt? Are you making your car uncomfortable for your children uh, or your partner? Um, is your car even usable? Because it's so full of stuff. Can you even fit um, things in the car? Um, you know, asking yourself, does what about other people in my life as they may want to use the space? Does this impact them in a negative way? Um, when we watch the shows with people who are hoarders, that's such a common thing that people, loved ones will say, you know, I don't really like to visit their house, or I have a lot of shame from growing up in a home that was super cluttered. Okay, so a, a, a exercise that I would like to offer you all, and you can do this just in your mind, or you could do it in real life. When we work, you know, the research with working with people who do clutter, have too much clutter, um, really suggests that this is a great exposure activity. And what it is, is to go to a place that you might normally acquire, but leave your money at home. So that you get that experience of walking through and really feeling those urges and then working with them. Um, and you can do this just in your mind, but it also might be a nice exercise to do um, in real life, to give you that feeling of like, okay, if I go to the thrift store or I go to this favorite store of mine, what is it like to walk through and know that if I don't buy this now, I might never be able to buy it. And just, just feeling those emotions and then seeing that you're still okay. Another aspect of acquiring that I'd like you all to pay attention to is your internal state as you're acquiring. So I talked a little bit about this with kind of maybe not being aware, or being checked out. Um, but when we're acquiring, acquiring can have like an addictive quality, right? Where it's like 
we kind of check out or we're in a hypnosis state or we are in an impulsive state or we're in um, a dopamine seeking state. So just noticing, you know, is there a quality that I feel when I'm getting into this impulsive acquiring place? Is there a sense, a felt sense to it? Can I feel that in my body? What does it feel like when I feel that urgency, that hypnosis kind of come over me? Um, and are there certain places that that happens more often? And do I need to go do some exposures there where I don't, where I go in without my money and I don't buy? Um, you know, that impulsive acquiring is something I'd like you to just spend a moment thinking about what circumstances you are most likely to be impulsive in taking things. Is it when somebody offers you something for free? Are there certain places that you're more likely to acquire? Um, is it when you feel pressure from others? Like I have to take all of the stuff from my grandmother because, you know, she's passed away and everyone else is dealing with the grief. Um, I'm just thinking about that. One of the things we covered in class was this concept of the downward arrow. The downward arrow is a strategy you can use to learn more about your beliefs and help you begin to challenge them. When you find yourself getting stuck, you'll ask to identify what you think might happen. So like around acquiring, what would happen if I didn't bring this home? What would happen if I didn't buy this? For each answer, you will keep asking more questions about what would be bad about that and then what would be bad about that until you get to the heart of your concern. For example, if you're feeling anxious about discarding something, you can ask yourself, if I were to discard this, what's the worst thing that could happen? I might need it someday. And what would be so bad about that? If I need it and don't have it, then I'd really feel like an idiot. And how bad would it be for me to feel like an idiot and so forth. So the aim of the downward arrow is to help you recognize what you are truly afraid of and what you truly believe about yourself. So, you know, and the, some of this can get into deep stuff from childhood around acquiring or having objects taken from us or poverty. So definitely, you know, it, get help <laughs> if this brings up a lot of stuff to go deep right if maybe your acquiring or your cluttering has been a way to protect yourself from some of these harder emotions so as you do the downward arrow if really hard stuff comes up being you know being kind to yourself and kind of willing to um maybe get help by seeing a therapist or maybe just doing more support groups. Um, one thing that I kind of touched on just a few minutes ago is that when we're acquiring, it's nice to think about not only like what do we want for our spaces, how do we want to use our spaces, but really stopping to ask, as I'm acquiring this, where will it go? Do I have a space in the home? So just taking a moment to imagine yourself doing that, thinking about, oh, if I'm going to bring this home, do I have a place for it? Now, another exercise that we can do similar to the downward arrow is to start paying attention to our if-then statements and predictions and then testing them out. So, uh, for example, if I don't buy this rocking chair, then I won't ever have the opportunity to buy a rocking chair again. Or if I don't buy this rocking chair, then I will feel a deep sense of regret. If I don't buy this rocking chair, then um, I will feel lonely. What is, what is the, that statement? And really looking at it as an observer, sometimes we just go with those if then statements and just kind of let ourselves believe them like the hypnosis that I talked about earlier um, whereas maybe if we even write it down then we get enough objectivity to say okay 
I'm not, I may feel a little bit of regret and sadness for this, not getting this rocking chair, but it's actually going to be great for me for my savings for the things that I really want. And it's going to help me to not clutter my space. So it's better for me to pass on this and feel some of the negative emotions. And, you know, one thing we can do is kind of write them out and then test and write down the outcome. So, you know, writing the if statement, the then statement, testing it out, and then writing out the outcome or conclusion. For example, if I don't buy this item, then I won't be able to stop thinking about it. That's the if then. And then you could test it out. I don't buy the item and pay attention to my thoughts over the next 24 hours. The outcome was after an hour, I wasn't thinking about it as much. And by the next day, I wasn't thinking about it at all. Conclusion, my brain doesn't just stay stuck on things forever. I'm able to move on, which is pretty empowering, right? How do we change our thoughts about acquiring when we recognize that we've had thoughts that lead to behavior of ultra acquiring, or maybe it's just acquiring at a slow and steady enough pace that we get overwhelmed by our stuff. Um, some of us find that we just do way better being more minimalist. So some rules and questions we can ask ourselves about, we'll start with kind of rules. It might be nice for you to write down rules for acquiring and keep them in your car or keep them in your wallet. Um, for example, I cannot get this object unless I plan to use it within the next month. I have enough money right now to pay for it. I have a place to put it so it doesn't add to the clutter. I am sure I truly want this and will not return it or feel like I want to return it. Acquiring this item is consistent with my goals and values for my life. I have a true need, not just a wish for this item. Now, it's okay sometimes to buy things that you just wish for or take home things that you just wish for. But if we're actively in this process of decluttering and recognizing that our life is, you know, feels better with not so much clutter, then looking at whether we need something can be really helpful. Along with those kind of rules, we could also ask ourselves questions. Do I already own something similar to this? Am I feeling buying this because I feel bad, angry, depressed right now? And along with that question of do I already own something similar, asking yourself, do I already own something similar and because my house is so cluttered, I can't find it? You know, that would be maybe another motivation to, to stay working on decluttering and not bring something home. It's like, well, I already have one of these, but I don't know where it is because I have too much stuff. Will I regret getting this in a week or a month? Could I manage without it? I use that one a lot. Could I manage without it? And then I can kind of be like, oh yeah, I don't really need this right now. If I really need it, I can always come back and get it. Do I have enough time to fix use this or do I have import, more important priorities? It's like, do you want to spend your time living in a house that's cluttered with things that you may get to someday? Or is it better just to, again, look at efficiency and say, I'm not bringing it in? Do I want it just because I'm looking at it right now? <laughs> like, did I even, would I, if you'd ask me, do I want this thing, I want something like this? you know, an hour before, would I have had any concept that I wanted it? Or is it just because I'm looking at it now and I like it? <laughs> That's kind of a possibilitarian thing, right? Like, ooh, I like this. I've never thought about having one before, but now that I see it in front of me, I, I want it. <laughs> I can see the possibilities of having this object. You can also write out advantages and disadvantages. So you could write out oh, the advantages of buying more clothes, feeling good about having new things to wear, reducing bad things if I'm in a funk, not losing out on a good bargain, but the disadvantages of buying more clothes is spending more money than I should, feeling guilty, being overwhelmed by laundry, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then finally, lastly, we had talked about this in, in our group 
and group, but um, creating a non-acquiring help card. So a card for yourself that you keep in your purse and, or your wallet or, you know, your car that has kind of those questions or those statements, you know, do I really need this? Do I have enough of these? Will this add something new and positive to my life or just contribute to my clutter problem? Whatever questions feel good for you. And if you Google, you know, online, like decluttering and acquiring or questions to ask yourself about keeping objects or questions to ask yourself about acquiring, you could put together a good list and then just keep that card somewhere so you can pull it out when you're out and about and you're thinking about acquiring. Or maybe you do a lot of online shopping, keeping that next to your computer or keeping it in your photos on your phone so that it's easily accessible to you. All right, so uh, that's kind of the end of our uh, topic for acquiring and bringing in possessions into our um, realms. <laughs> and I hope you all have a great week and have some success and feeling feel start feeling empowered around um, your re relationship to your objects and to acquiring.